So this monitor right here has come in from ASRock. They wanted a full Tech Yes City review. And before I started unboxing it, I wanted to see what would make this potentially special. And that would be right there, the current price that you can get it at. $165, and that's for a 1440p or 2K, 180 hertz IPS display. Now also in today's video, we're gonna be checking out this one millisecond motion picture response time. We'll check out the normal response times as well as input lag. And we'll check out this AMD FreeSync and it's HDR 400 certified. But for me personally, that doesn't really carry a whole lot of meaning. What I'm interested in is what panel is going into this monitor. And from what I gather, it is a AU Optronics. And this panel with 180 Hertz was rumored to have the art coding on it. So it should look pretty good while still blocking out reflections pretty well. Now the FreeSync range is also around 48 to 180 Hertz, which is gonna be really good. And G-Sync should also be supported. Now let's unbox this thing and then see what we're looking at. So we've now put this thing together. It takes literally like two minutes to put it together. There's just one screw at the bottom of the base there. Put the base on, then attach the monitor, and that's auto click in attachment with uh, no screws needed. So one screw in total, and then we've got the monitor here with a very thin bezel on the side, but also the matte coating looks sort of more closer to semi-gloss, but as you can see my reflection here, it's blocking out a lot of the bad reflections. So that's incredible in that the coat already looks good for people who like matte and wanna block out sunlight. Me personally, I do like my glossy because I can control the light in my studio here, but still good to see on a budget monitor, such a nice implementation of a matte coating from the get-go. Now, speaking of the base itself, you've got tilt adjust, height adjust and swivel adjust, but you don't have rotate. So that will be one thing that you won't be able to do is put it in portrait mode with the included stand. That being said though, it is VESA mountable. So you will be able to mount this thing with the VESA mount standard edition size. But let's move on to what's included in the box here. You've got display port, which is 1.4 and the included cable will do that. So you'll be able to run 180 Hertz over this at 1440p. Then you've got HDMI 2 and then you've got two Wi-Fi antennas, one for 2.4 and one for five gigahertz. Then you've got an included power cable as well as an additional power cable, which looks like it's for the US. Then you have the manual and looking at the back of the monitor, two HDMI, two ins, as well as a display port in. And then you've got an audio 3.5 mil out to either power aux speakers or your headphones. Then your kettle cable in and your OSD buttons, which is five of them in total. So quickly checking out the build quality, nothing slides, so it's got really uh, firm feet and nothing feels cheap on the included stand. So overall, for the money so far, everything is checking out with flying colors, but the most important thing with a gaming monitor is the actual monitor itself. So let's jump right into those details and see what numbers we can pull up, as well as just gaming on it for a few hours and then reporting back and seeing what I think of it overall. So guys, we have been just gaming on this thing and running all the tests, and I gotta say, thoroughly impressed. Let's go over the good numbers first. Input lag, under five milliseconds, at least when we're testing CS2 with high FPS, just with the V-Sync or G-Sync or FreeSync settings switched off. I'm just trying to get the best scores here and see what this monitor is capable of, and it sure did impress. But also the response times were really good for an IPS panel. Now, with the response times, there's two modes here. You've got overdrive on versus off. And in both instances, it didn't make a huge difference. I would just leave this on, which is the default setting, which is on the monitor. And then we've got for brightness, here's where I'd critique this thing with my only big critique. And this is with the MPRT setting, which essentially what it is is strobing. And you have to have this at 180 Hertz. But what it does is it inserts a black frame, or in this case, it's coming out on the uh, camera as a red frame, but it's actually doing this at a three to one ratio, meaning every three frames off, one frame is on. And so that makes the brightness unfortunately suffer at that same ratio. It's 25% max brightness. And here's where with this MPRT setting on, 
it does get from the worst uh, square on a 5x5 grid at 94 nits versus 115 in the middle. So there is a slight sort of vignetting effect on the monitor with the brightness uniformity. However, turning the MPRT setting off, which is a shame. I'm gonna, last thing I'll say about this is it did increase the response times, like the perceivable response times to a really good level. When we had the UFO test on, I was following the top UFO at 180 FPS and I was actually really impressed by how good the MPRT was on this monitor, except the brightness at 115 nits max is, for me personally, I do at least like to have it around 180 to 200. That's like at least. Now, when you turn this off, however, we're going up now to 385 at the worst square to 430. So that 400 advertised on the box, it's actually even going higher than that, which is really good to see. Now, the max brightness as well, when you do turn this on, there is, again, just like having MPRT on, it's going to have that slight vignetting, I guess, if you would call it that. Very slight, but it's not bad and it's not off-putting, as we can see, while even while we're talking and filming this monitor. So input lag, response times, and brightness uniformity all check out. And then we go over to the cross-hatching, which is mainly a test nowadays that I do personally, just to see if the on-screen matte coating is bad or not, and there's no cross-hatching at all, and this is at 180 hertz too. I use this with an orange background just to check for this. So in other words, the coating that they've put on this is really good if you like to use a monitor and you've got a lot of sunlight coming into the room, as we said before, but I just wanted to use it and get proof of it after using it for a good solid 10 hours, this monitor, and I was pleasantly surprised by how good this is for a matte coating. So that's a very impressive feature of the monitor too. But the last thing we're gonna talk about now, in particular this panel, is the colors. Out of the box, the profile that was the most accurate for editing colors, when I tested it with the color calibrator, would have been the user mode. So that's weird. There's this standard user mode in there that sort of just got 50-50-50. It was actually the closest to being color accurate. So at least you've got that mode on there that's actually pretty good if you want to edit videos. Me personally, I like to have this on warm because it is a white LED backlit panel. And so there is going to be always a bias towards blue light on a backlit panel like that. So having it on warm sort of counteracts that a little bit. But even then, at these settings and with this panel, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the viewing angle and then gaming on it with my final test, just playing some Dota 2, as well as a bit of Fortnite. I was impressed with just how good the picture looks, especially for the money. So to conclude this thing, in total, it is an absolute win. If you're looking for a really good looking panel and you wanna go with 1440p, that's also got good build quality and you're on a budget. I think that is the main takeaway from this monitor right here. So really good job from ASRock in terms of overall with this monitor. I can't really fault anything because last time I think I critiqued uh, something like RGB on a monitor, they've taken away the RGB. And so they're saving that as costs. And then they've included that Wi-Fi, that's their own touch. And I personally like that little Wi-Fi adapter. I think it's really cool because a lot of Wi-Fi antennas that come with motherboards absolutely suck. And this has actually got strong signal uh, strength with it too. And then you get the cable management options and got all the extra cables. So really overall, awesome monitor. I think the only thing it would really need was the rotating on the stand. But again, at the price as well as the MLP, MPRT, I can't really critique those two things because it's just such good value in its current form. The also, the final thing to go over would be the OSD. I would prefer this as well to be a omnidirectional, just one button. I find them so much easier. But that being said, it's just got the simplest options here. There's not a whole lot to go through, but it's got the options that you would want from a monitor and you would need. So things like changing your colors, things like turning on your MPRT or turning on your overdrive setting. It's got all those built in and yeah, pretty easy OSD to use and that's about it guys. So hope you enjoyed the look at the Phantom Gaming. Uh, I'm just gonna put the model number up on the screen now because I forgot it. It's actually nine characters. Model numbers should be seven characters or less because the human brain tends to have a, a thing where it remembers up to seven characters quite easily. After that it forgets and I'm just a victim of that. <laughs> Anyhow, great 1440p IPS monitor. Hope you guys enjoyed today's review. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below what you think of this budget banger 1440p. I think that being said, 1440p is definitely becoming the new 1080p at these prices and especially with things like DLSS 
and upscaling getting really good, it can just make for a better experience overall, even for relatively nothing extra on top of what 1080p would cost. So awesome monitor, awesome times to be a PC gamer, especially when it comes to getting your money's worth with things like this. But with all that out of the way, look forward to seeing you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.